Hi, welcome to Don's Key Tech. In this video, I am going to show you how we can configure our Raspberry Pi Pico W running the latest MicroPython firmware with a web source server so that we can control our components through our mobile phones. So, I have here my Raspberry Pi Pico W and connected to it is my RGB LED module. This is my web application that is currently running inside my RGB LED. As you can see, there are three sliders in here that we can configure so that we can change the color being displayed by the RGB LED. So if we try to change the value of the slider for the blue, then you would see that my RGB LED turned off. But if we try changing the red, then you would see that the RGB LED is showing red. And if we try changing it to green, then you would see that the more that I change the value in my slider, the greater the intensity of the green in the RGB LED module. If we try creating a combination of these three colors, then you would see that the there is some changes in the RGB LED module and the combination of the green and the blue change the color of the RGB to a, some, some sort of a cyan. And if we try changing the, the green and, and then remove the green, by the way, and add the red, then you would notice that the color in the RGB LED changes into some sort of a pinkish color. This particular project was specifically inspired by the comments that I have received from one of my previous video wherein it was requested if I can create a slider to control the three colors since there is not much information on how to send the slider position back to our Pico W. So if you want to have your questions answered by me, so you can subscribe to my channel so that I can answer your question. If you want to know how I did this project, then let's start exploring. Let's first discuss a little bit regarding how this project was designed. So I have here my Raspberry Pi Pico W. Inside the Raspberry Pi Pico W is a micro dot web server. This web server creates a web application wherein we have drawn the three sliders. And the Raspberry Pi Pico W is connected to the RGB LED module so that whatever the values that is being sent by the web application is directly reflected by the RGB LED module. As you can see in here, the connection between the Raspberry Pi Pico and the web application is using WebSocket as we need real-time response from our web application to our RGB module. So using the WebSocket is a good tool for us as a communication protocol. For the wiring and the schematic, as you can see, just follow along with this table or you can use your own pin assignment as most of the pins in the Raspberry Pi Pico W supports P PWM or pulse width modulation. So let's start discussing the code for this project. The code is available in my GitHub repository which you can find in the description of this video. Let's now start with the boot.py. The boot.py is used to connect to our Wi-Fi network. Just remember to change the SSID to match your network configuration. The RGB LED.py is the file that will interface to our RGB LED module. And as you can see, it is expecting the pins to be supplied when you call this particular class. The important method for this class is the set RGB color. As you can see, I'm changing the value of the duty cycle for each of the red, green, and blue so that we can change the value. The values that you're seeing here is there is a function that I have created called map range. And the reason why is that the values that is coming from our web application is from 0 to 100. 
and we need to map the duty cycle into 0 to 6535. So I have here a function called map range so that we can alter the duty cycle from 0 to 100 to 0 to 6535. What I mean by this is that if I pass in 0 from our web application, then we will receive a duty cycle of 0. But if we receive the 100, then we will receive the 65,535. The main.py, on the other hand, is our main file, which contains our micro.web application. We just import the RGB LED module that we have created earlier, and we initialize it with the PWM pins. Once the PWM pins is passed, then we can set the default RGB color. So the default value that I have set for now is 50, 50, and 50, which means that there is a 50% combination of both RGB color. Then we initialize the micro dot with the, these two lines of code. Then we define the root route, wherein we will render the template index.html. This is the function that reads the sensor values from our web application. So as you can see, we have added it a route slash WS and the decorator at with web socket. There is the infinite loop here that waits for any web socket messages. And as you can see, whatever message that we receive from our web application is converted into a JSON. And that JSON is being used to set the RGB color. Now I have two convenience function here that serves the CSS or JSS JavaScript. So as you can see, it's just serving everything in the static route, which is the folder here. Then we have at the slash shutdown route, which will shut down our application. Then we have here the entry point of our project, which we, which will just run our micro dot server. It is important to initialize the PWM pins such that when we exit the application, then all the PWM pins will be initialized back to its original configuration. And that's all for the file. The files that you're seeing here for the micro dot are just the micro dot specific files, which I have just copied from the project source, the micro dot framework. Now let's discuss the templates, which is the index.html. The index.html is basically a web page wherein I have created these three sliders, which refers to the red, green, and blue. So each slider has its corresponding label for the value, and we, we, show, we show the current value by this one through JavaScript. And the index.js is where it handles the sending of the WebSocket messages. So for the index.js, we just define the slider. So this is the slider. And for each slider element, we added an event listener for the change. As you can see, the, we extract first the value from the red slider value so that we can update the text content of our red slider value that you are seeing from the bottom of the slider. So this is the value that you're seeing here. So whatever the value is being reflected by this label. Then we call the send message, which will send a JSON string our Raspberry Pi Pico W web server. We just extract the values for each slider and pass it to our receiver. Next, this, this is the WebSocket URL that we're in. We connect to our WebSocket in our micro dot application. And as you can see, we just initialize the socket when the when the application is loaded. And then we have the callback function here, which just console logs the messages. The important function that you're seeing here is the function which send message. Wherein this is the function that we use to send the WebSocket messages coming from our browser. So as you can see in here, there is a Raspberry Pi Pico W in here. And Whenever we change something in the slider, then you would see that the values is being reflected and we receive the message OK coming from our Raspberry Pi Pico micro server. So basically, that is how the code works. The code for this project, including the detailed write-up 
of this project is available in the description of this video. I hope you learned something. Happy exploring!